to the book of Revelation. Now I want, I'm going to try not to go too fast. Somebody said you went too fast. And so I'm going to try not to go fast. And ask a question, any questions, a good question, and you, know, you learn by asking. So any question goes. All right, first of all, if you have a set of notes there, uh, that today, uh, four accounts of the tribulation in chapters 4 through chapters 19. It's a misprint. It's not 4 through 17. It's 4 through 19. All right, and of course, uh, you noted the last, the divisions. Uh, the book of Revelation is divided into, for a little bit of uh, going over what you uh, got last uh, time we taught on Revelation, you want to write down, uh, uh, write this down, Revelation 1, 19 is the key verse in the division of the book of Revelation, 1, 19 is the key verse for the division of of the book of Revelation. Now let's read verse 19. Write the things which thou hast seen, and the things which are, and the things which shall be hereafter. Alright, write the things which thou hast seen. All right in the margin of your Bible, he saw verse 11. He saw verse 11. Now let's go back and read verse 11 and see what the first division is going to be. Saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. Oh, what thou seest, there it is, underline that, what thou seest. So he says in verse 19, what thou hast seen, back to verse 11, what thou seest, write in a book and send it to the seven churches, which are in Asia, under Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamos, Thyatira, Sidus, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. So what did he saw? What has he seen? He saw the seven churches. So the seven churches are given in chapters 1, 2, and 3. Now, you should mark those seven churches. Let's uh, mark them. Uh, write down Revelation 2, 1 is the first church, the church of Ephesus. Revelation 2, 1, that's the first church. The, the church of Smyrna, the second church, is Revelation 2, 8. Revelation 2.8. Now the best way to get it is circle the word Ephesus. Circle the word Smyrna. If you have a marker, if you have a highlighter, a yellow, no, I don't like yellow, a blue highlighter, be good to highlight these churches. Because we're going to talk about these uh, seven churches. All right. The third church is Pergamos in two. 12, Revelation 2.12 is Pergamos, so circle of Pergamos. All right, uh, Revelation 2.18 is Thyatira, Revelation 2.18, and Revelation 3.1 is Sodos, Revelation 3.1, and Revelation 3.7 is Philadelphia, Revelation 3.7, and... Revelation chapter 3, verse 14 is Laodicea, the seven churches. So, give you a chance to circle them. Circle each one in your Bible. Circle each one of those seven churches. We'll take time to do that, because then when you read your Bible and you look at your Bible and see those seven churches, they'll stand out, because they're all separate seven churches. And that is the division of... Of the first three chapters. Now, chapters 4 through 19 is uh, your notes that I give you tonight. It's this entire page right here that you have, 4 through 19. Now, there are four accounts, four separate accounts of uh, the Great Tribulation in those chapters. Four separate accounts, and four separate accounts, uh, just like you would have, just like you have, four separate accounts of the life of Christ. Here you have four separate accounts of the Great Tribulation. 
Uh, the four separate accounts here are Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. So this period of time, right here, three and a half years of, of Christ's ministry, as a, a life of Christ, you have Matthew. Then Mark starts over, goes through. Matthew, Mark, Luke. Luke starts over and goes through. John starts over and goes through. They're separate four accounts. They don't follow each other. They're all separate four accounts given. You have the same thing here. Look at your notes. The seven seals. That's a separate account by itself, the seven seals. Then you have the seven trumpets. The seven trumpets are separate accounts. They don't run consecutive like this, running through here like that. You have the account of the seals, one through seven, and that thing all its own, all its own, sits there by itself. Then you have the seven trumpets, one through seven, and they sit there. And then the account of the Antichrist, and then you have the account of the last seven vials, four separate accounts. And that's from chapter 4 through chapter 19. Now, now look at them down through there. Now, uh, to, you need to mark them in your Bible. The first one is Revelation chapter 6. Revelation chapter 6 and pick up verse 1. Revelation 6, 1. And I saw, uh, and I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals. That's the first one. Now, chapter six, verse three. And when he had opened the second seal, so underline it. Second seal. Uh, Revelation chapter six, verse five. And when he had opened the third seal. Now, I've given you one word here describing each one of them. Now, we'll go, as we start studying later on, verse by verse, we'll go into detail and study each one of these seven seals. We'll study them in detail. Right now, I've just given you a single couple of words to describe the seal. All right. Now, what you need to note, uh, notice the sixth seal, chapter 6, verse 12, and behold, when he had opened the sixth seal, now you would think that the automatically the seventh seal will follow. That's not the case. There's a gap between the sixth and seventh seal, which is Revelation chapter 7, an entire chapter. So there's a gap on the seals, uh, you could draw you some kind of seal, another, uh, uh, something, another, make a seal. But there's a gap in between the sixth and seventh seal of chapter seven. Chapter seven is a gap. It's an intermission. It's kind of like he's watching a movie, and all of a sudden they put in this reel, this uh, news reel. The news reel is chapter seven. And so in your notes, it's either a gap, or it's an intermission, or it's a timeout however you call it, but it occurs right there. So if you're reading down through and you think the seven seals all fall together, no, there's a gap of that chapter 7 that's a kind of talking about something special in the tribulation. All right, again, uh, notice uh, in your notes the seven trumpets, each one of them uh, beginning in Revelation chapter 8, verse uh, turn to look, notice the last one, Revelation 8 1 is the seventh seal. Revelation 8 1. And when he had opened the seventh seal, there it is. That's the last one of them. All right, now what you want to see here is you want to see the advent of Christ. You want to see the advent, the second advent. Now, the second advent is the end of the tribulation. So the, uh, the end of that period of time of the seals. Now look at Revelation chapter 6. Revelation chapter 6. 
And uh, you need to mark this down because this is important. Revelation chapter 6. And let's, uh, let's look at verse 16. Revelation 6, 16. This period of time is also known as Armageddon. <coughs> it's also known as Armageddon. All right. Uh, let's, let's read the verse and then we'll read, we'll, uh, read it again in Revelation chapter 19, which is the count of the seven vials. All right, uh, Revelation 6, 9, 7. I mean, Revelation 6, 16. Y'all there? Let's read it. Let's read it now. And seven of the mountains and rocks fall on us and hide us from the face of him that set us on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. Write down one word. I'm again. I'm again. And write down the cross reference right beside verse 16. Write down uh, Revelation chapter 19. Now, we're going to go up to the last account, the vials. And at Revelation chapter 19, we're going to pick up verse 11. And this is Armageddon. The word Armageddon occurs uh, back there under the another account. It's given as Armageddon. All right, uh, Revelation chapter 19. Let's pick up verse 11. And I saw, uh, I saw heaven open, and behold a white horse, and him that sat upon it was called faithful and true and righteousness, and he doth judge and make war. And his eyes were as the flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knoweth but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him into the white horse and clothed and finally in the white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, uh, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and treadeth the winepress as furious to the wrath of Almighty God. And he hath on his uh, vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. And then on down through there. That's called the Battle of Armageddon. That's the last battle that's fought at the end of the tribulation. So the, in the account of the, uh, the, seven by, the seven seals, the seven seals, Revelation chapter 6, verse 13, 14, 15, and 16. That's Armageddon, Armageddon. So that's the end of the first account. Now, a question, I'm going too fast. Any questions? Question. All right. Now, the trumpets, the trumpets, the seven trumpets. Take your Bible and look at each one. Revelation 8, 7 is the first trumpet. Revelation 8, 7. It, the gap, but it's not a long period of time. It's The gap is... It's there, but it's not a long period of time. I'm going to talk about that in a minute. Uh, no, that's just a time out in it. That, that chapter that's, that's there, uh, each one of them, there's a, there's a gap between each, each one of them, there's a gap in between the sixth and seventh uh, seal, the sixth and seventh trumpet. There's a gap right there. But it's not a long period of time. I'm going to talk about that period of time there because it's not a long period of time. It's not like 10 years, 15 years, or 20 years. It's a short period of time. You might write that down in your notes. It's a short period of time, the gap that occurs there. Uh, you're not certain of that. They may, the tribulation is one week, which is seven years. It may be the whole thing It happens in 42 months. The whole thing happens in 42 months. Maybe it's all the second half of the tribulation. 
and that's that's the argument in theology is when that the middle of that week when that thing the antichrist comes in and sits up uh, as as the antichrist as god then that second half goes that comes the great tribulation so it may just be all this happens all the seals the trumpets and vials and everything it may happen all in the second half of the tribulation some of it referred to the wrath of god i think the wrath of god he covers the entire tribulation and that's how this guy got messed up right in one of these new books he come out with said the second half is the wrath the first half is not the wrath i believe the whole tribulation is the wrath of god so the thing comes a little confusing but it's at least uh well let me go we'll go on here through it and as you come down through here you'll see some more all right now the seven trumpets the seven trumpets all right and there's a gap between the sixth and seventh trumpet uh which is chapter 10. so uh let's look at uh let's look at the sixth trumpet revelation 9 13. revelation 9 13 is the sixth trumpet revelation 9 16. is that right uh, 9 there it is verse 13 revelation 9 13 and the sixth angel sounded there it is that's the sixth trumpet and the sixth angel sounded that's the sixth trumpet all right uh, and I heard the voice. Uh, now, what you want to have there is that uh, chapter ten is an intermission. Look at the seventh trumpet, uh, Revelation eleven fifteen. Revelation eleven fifteen, and the seventh angel sounded. So there's a gap of chapter ten is the gap. Chapter ten is the time out. So chapter 10 is an intermission. It's an intermission. Intermission is probably the best way to say it. Because like you're watching the tribulation, you're sitting watching the tribulation, all of a sudden the thing stops, and here's an intermission of a newsreel. Chapter 10 is the newsreel. <laughs> I'll answer that in a minute. We'll go as we go down through here. You'll see that as we go down through here. You'll see that but keep that in mind All right uh, now Revelation uh, chapter 11 verse 15 Revelation 11 15 Revelation chapter 11 verse 15 says and the seventh angel sounded and there was a great voice in heaven saying now now Pay real close attention to what you're about to read, because what you're about to read, you're about to read the end of the seventh account of the trumpets. You're in, you're in the trumpets, and you're about to read the advent, the second advent of Christ. So right in the margin of your Bible, beside the verse we're reading, second advent of Christ, which is the end, is the end of the second account, so the Lord's getting ready to return. He's coming back, and he's landing on the Mount of Olives. Okay, now let's read it. Verse 15. And the seventh angel sounded, and there was great voice in heaven saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. That's given there and not over here in Revelation chapter 19 yet because it's given here because this is the end of the second account you follow that do you follow what I just said you don't follow ask a question <laughs> ask a question the reason why this is given here in the seven account, the, the sound of the seven trumpets, the reason why it's given right there is to show you 
that there's four separate accounts. Because here's the advent right here, and it's way back back in the book of Revelation. It's not at the end. It's not over there at the end. It occurs over at the end, but brings are separate accounts. This is a separate account here of the seven uh, uh, seals, and here's another account of the seven trumpets. You have Armageddon right here at the end of the seven trumpets. The death of Christ. Just like at the end of the gospel, the end of Matthew, you have the death of Christ. Well, you also have the death of Christ at the end of Mark. You also have the death of Christ. Did he die four different times? No. Is the advent four different times in the book of Revelation? No. The advent's not four different times in the book of Revelation. The advent is given here because this is one account. Advent is given here for the trumpets because this is one account. Here for the Antichrist, because this is what I count. And here at the end, because this is the seven uh, vials. So it, of course, four different times. That's right. That's right. Did this all take place at once here? Took place at once. Christ's life all took place at once. So just four separate accounts, they all took place in Christ's lifetime right there. Sure, sure. Same person, they all take place at the same time. So this takes place the same time as this takes place, and this takes place the same time as this takes place, and same time as this takes place. They all take place at the same time. Now, then you follow what I said? They don't run consecutive like this, one after the other. Like one... He shows him. He shows him the seven, the seven seals. He shows him that first. He shows him the seven seals. There it is. Bang! End of the tribulation. Advent is all through. Then there's an intermission. He goes out and gets a cup of coffee. And then he shows him the seven trumpets. But he starts all over again. Goes from beginning to end. Then there's an intermission. Does the same thing again. An intermission. Does the thing again. And there's an intermission in each account. Alright. Now, all the way through there, which, which we want to get now is the account of the Antichrist. Each one of them. Uh, the account of the Antichrist. And it has an intermission in it. And that's chapter 15 is the intermission. So you've got to circle that. Chapter 7 is an intermission. Chapter 10 is an intermission. Chapter 15 is an intermission. It's a time out or it's a gap. All right? And that's in the account of the Antichrist. Now, Revelation chapter 14, verse 20. Revelation chapter 14, verse 20. Let's go back and uh, pick up verse 18. Revelation 14, 18. Watch the advent. Watch the advent. The second advent of Christ. Revelation chapter uh, 14, verse 18. 
another angel come out from the altar which had power of fire and cried with a loud voice to him that had the sharp sickle, saying, Thrust in the sharp sickle and gather the cluster of the vines of the earth and her grapes are fully ripe. An angel thrust in his sickle unto the earth and gathered the vine of the earth and cast it into the great winepress of the wrath of God. And the winepress was treading without the city, now watch it, and the blood came out of the winepress, even unto the horse's bridle. What is that? That's Armageddon. So the blood flows down through the valley of Megiddo to the height of the horse's bridles. God's killing, Christ is killing all the armies of the world. That's Armageddon. So you find Armageddon in Revelation chapter uh, 14, verse 18, 19, and 20. And that's the account of the Antichrist. So there's a gap of chapter 15. It's a gap. It's a timeout. It's a timeout. <coughs> it's an intermission. Went and got a cup of coffee and, and some popcorn. And watch the newsreel. The newsreel is chapter 15. No, it's just another name for the same thing. Armageddon, Second Advent, the same uh, terminology. Well, Armageddon is a Bible definition. Uh, uh, the Advent is a theological definition. It's a theological word. The Second Advent is a theological word describing the Battle of Armageddon. All right. Uh, now the uh, fourth account. The fourth account. The fourth account is the vials, the seven vials. The seven vials in the uh, sixth and seventh vial is a little bit different on the timeout or the intermission, but you want to get it. Uh, the seven vials, uh, Revelation chapter 16, Revelation chapter 16. And look at uh, verse, uh, uh, where is that seventh? Uh, the sixth vial is 16, 12. 16, 12. And the sixth angel poured out his vial. Now look at 16, 17. And the seventh angel poured out his vial. If you weren't careful, you'd think, well, the vials, there's no gap in the vials. There's no gap in the vials if you're not careful. It goes sixth vial, seventh vial, no gap, no time out. Now, wait a minute. He gives it, <coughs> but look at the account. Look at Revelation chapter 19 is the advent. So the advent's not given here. It's not given in 16. It's not given until you get to Night chapter 19, 11 through the end of the chapter. That's the advent right there. So there's a gap of what? There's a gap of two chapters, 16, chapter 17 and chapter 18. Two gaps, uh, two chapters. Chapter 17 and chapter 18 is the two gap, is the, is the time out or the intermission for the seven vials the seven vials all right question any questions now now the question is why is the gap why does the gap occur now take your bible and turn to matthew turn to matthew chapter 25 matthew chapter 25 Make it Matthew chapter 24, rather. Matthew 24. The reason for the gap that being in there. Matthew chapter 24. And let's pick up verse 42. Matthew 20, 24, verse 42. Watch therefore, for you know not what hour your Lord doth come. But know this, that if the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would have come, 
he would have watched and would have not suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not, the Son of Man cometh, who, when the faithful and wise servant, <coughs> now watch it, whom his Lord hath made ruler over all uh, his household to give uh, them meat in due season. Blessed is that servant whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. That I say unto you that he shall uh, make him ruler over all his goods. Now watch verse 48. This is why there's a gap in there given in each account. There's a gap given. Verse 42 but, and if that evil servant, that's somebody in the tribulation, not the church age, not you and me, if that evil servant shall say in his heart, my Lord delayeth his coming. So there's going to be a delay of time there. Delayeth his coming and shall begin to smite his fellow servant and to eat and drink and being and drunken, the Lord of that servant, tribulation saint, shall come in a day when he looketh not afore him, and in an hour that he is not aware of, and shall cut him asunder and appoint him his portion with the hypocrite, and there shall we weeping and gnashing of teeth. So there's a gap right in there, a period of time, don't know how long it's going to be, but the tribulation saint is not to give up and quit. He's to keep right on going down to the end. Now, if you're in, you're in the tribulation and you're seeing the whole book of Revelation take place right in front of your face, which it will, amen? Then when you see the one, one seal, the second seal, the third seal, the fourth seal, the fifth seal, and you're seeing that national television, and you're looking right at it, you're saying... It's almost over. It's almost over. And then something happens. There's a period of time right here. The Lord delayeth his coming. If you ain't careful, you're going to give up and quit and go back out there and take the mark. See that? So that's given. That's given. That gap's given there to make sure that tribulation saint right down to the end doesn't give up and quit. Now, take your Bible and turn to the book of Daniel and watch it again. Here it is again. Turn to the book of Daniel. And turn to Daniel chapter 12. Daniel chapter 12. Now, you need to write down these four dates, four periods of time. And it covers the second half of the tribulation of three and a half years. <laughs> Daniel chapter 12, let's pick up verse 11, Daniel 12, 11. For the time that the daily sacrifice, uh, that's talked about, that's when the Antichrist takes away the daily sacrifice. From the time that the daily sacrifice should be taken away, and the abomination that maketh desolation set up. I'll have to give you four or five verses on that later. And there shall be, now this is what you want to get right now, is this time thing right here. There shall be a thousand two hundred and ninety days. One thousand two hundred and ninety days. Now, verse 12. Blessed is he that waiteth. See, like there's a gap there. So he tells them to wait. And the coming of the thousand three hundred and five and thirty days. So there's one thousand three hundred and thirty five days. Those are two different dates. One's one thousand two hundred and ninety and the other is one thousand three hundred and thirty five. There's two different ones. Now look at uh Look at uh, Daniel chapter 8, verse 14, and watch even another one. Daniel chapter 8, verse 14. This is a reason for the gap in those seals, trumpets, and the vials, and the account of the Antichrist. Daniel chapter 8, verse 14. 
And he said unto me, well, actually, you have to have uh, verse 11. Let's go get Daniel 8, 11. And he magnified himself even to the prince of the host, and by him the daily sacrifice was taken away. That's what you want to get. The daily sacrifice was taken away. And the places of the sanctuary was cast down. And the host was given again unto the daily sacrifice by reason of transgression. And it was cast down the truth to the ground, and it uh, precious and prospered. Then I heard one saint speaking to another saint, said unto the certain saint which spake, How long? We get that in Psalms, 100 and, uh, Psalms 13, 1 through 4, that how long? He went across that verse all night. How long shall be the vision concerning the daily sacrifice? There it is, underlined, daily sacrifice. And the transgression of desolation, to give both to the sanctuary and the host to the treading down of foot. And he said unto me, underline it, unto two thousand and three hundred days. So you have what? Two thousand three hundred days. So now you have three different times. You have one thousand two hundred ninety days. You got 1,335 days and 2,300 days. Now, get even another time. Revelation chapter 11. Revelation chapter 11. And pick it up again. Revelation chapter 11. And pick up verse, uh, let's be getting at verse 1. Revelation 11, 1. And there was given me a reed likened to a rod, and the angel standing, saying, Rise and measure the temple of God, and the altar of them that worship therein. By the court which is without the temple, leave out, and measure it not. For it is given unto the Gentiles, and the holy city shall they tread underfoot, now underline it, forty and two months, forty and two months, uh, look at that time period again. Uh, Revelation uh, 12, 6. Revelation 12, 6. And a woman fled into the wilderness where she had a place prepared of God, and they shall feed her there. Now watch it. A thousand two hundred and three score days. So that's one thousand two hundred and sixty days. So you have four different periods of time. So write that down. Four different periods of time showing you the length of this period. Now, 1,200, didn't, we didn't write them all down. But there's, so that period is not pinpointed it. here. It's not pinpointed here. So when the tribulation saint reads that like that, he has to account that, hey, the Lord's going to, not going to reveal to us exactly when he's going to return. So we got to go to the end. So I can't give up and quit. i got to go right to the end because there's a gap right there. But it's not long. It's not long. It's just going to be for a short period of time. All right. Any questions now? Any questions? Any questions? Now, does that make it clear? The seven vials, the seven seals, the seven trumpets, and the account of the Antichrist. They're all separate accounts by themselves. All right, Revelation chapter 1, verse 1. Revelation chapter 1, verse 1. All right, Revelation chapter 1, verse 1. The revelation of St. John the Divine. And then the next thing you read is the revelation of Jesus Christ. Which one is it? It's both. Write it down. It's both. Now how can it be both? It's how the word of is used. The love of God. Is that God's love for me or my love for him? Go either way. The love of God. God loves me. Amen. I love him, so the love of God will go either way. So write that down. It is the revelation of St. John the Divine. It sure is. 
But it's also the revelation of Jesus Christ. It's both of them, depending how you use the word of. Now, that's very important because if you remind yourself of that, when you're reading the Bible and you see the word of, you'll say, now, can go either way and then see which way it goes. Because sometimes folks have come up with some real, come up with some stuff that's real messed up because they just misread the word of. Pentecostals do it real bad. Can they read the word of there and really get messed up just with the word of? All right. Now, of St. John the Divine, right? Underneath the word divine, write down Genesis 44, verse 15. And take your Bible and turn to Genesis and turn to Genesis chapter 44. Now, all of the commentaries in my office uh, sometimes destroy people because the commentaries, all the commentaries said is throw out the title of the book of Revelation. Throw it out. <laughs> Take the book of Revelation throw the title away. The Revelation of St. John the Divine, they all criticized it tremendously. Why did they criticize it? The Revelation of St. John the Divine. All right. Uh, Genesis 44 Verse 15. Genesis 44, 15. Now watch the word divine. 44, 15. Divine. They say, uh, John don't divine. Yes, he does. It is the revelation of St. John the divine. Because he does divine. That's what the book of Revelation is. The divine book. Uh, Genesis 44, verse 15 says, And Joseph said unto them, uh, what deed is this that ye have done? What ye not, that such a man as I certainly does what? Divine. Who's talking? Joseph is talking. Joseph is talking. And Joseph says, I can divine. I can divine. Sure he can. Through the Holy Spirit. So write it down on the margin of your Bible. He can through the Holy Spirit just like John did when he wrote the book of Revelation. It is the revelation of St. John the Divine. All right. Revelation chapter 1, verse 1. And the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. Now underline that. Shortly come to pass. Then uh, he writes it. John, way back here on the Isle of Patmos in 90 A.D., he writes that right there, where shortly come to pass. And how long has that been, folks? How many? 2,000 years. Then why did he say, shortly come to pass? So write this in the margin of the Bible so you won't have any more misunderstanding with it. When the events found in the book of Revelation begin to take place, they will take place real quick. So he says, shortly come to pass. When you see these events take place, boy, it's going to be take just like that. 42 months, it'll be over. Just like that. See the thing? So in a seven-year period of time, it's not very long shortly come to pass, so write it down that way. When the events found in the book of Revelation begin to take place, you know there's not much time left. That's why he says, shall shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto the servant John, who bore a record of the word of God, underline that. He bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ. He bears witness of those two things. Now, take your Bible and turn to Revelation chapter uh, the test 19. Revelation chapter 19. <coughs> and let's see what the testimony of Jesus Christ is. Revelation chapter 19, verse 10. And I fell at his feet and worshipped him. Uh, I see. I, I fell at his feet 
and I fell at his feet and worshipped him. And he said unto me, See thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Christ. Worship God for the testimony of Jesus. See, that's what you just read over here. The testimony of Jesus Christ. What is it? The testimony of Jesus Christ is, what is it? The spirit of what? Prophecy. So the testimony of Jesus Christ is a spirit of prophecy. So if you have the testimony of Jesus Christ, what will you be able to do? Tell the future. Now how many of you can tell me the future absolutely, positively, without a shadow of a doubt, where you're going when you die? You can really tell me for sure. No hope so. You know where you're going when you drop dead. All right, what is that? That's the spirit of prophecy. You all got it. I know that I'm going to heaven when I die. And that's the future. That ain't heaven, that's still in the future. So you have the spirit of prophecy. Does a man have the spirit of prophecy? He ought to be able to tell the future. That all says, well, I don't know where I'm going when I die. I hope I'm saved. I don't know whether I'm going to heaven or not. You ain't got the spirit of prophecy then. See that? A lot of folks say, well, you can't know you're going to heaven when you die. You've got a big problem. The Bible says you can know it. Then if you want a blessing, how many want a blessing? You really want a blessing. I mean a blessing that lasts a while. A blessing of a car usually don't last. <laughs> A blessing of a house, eventually it falls away. The blessing of uh, a million dollars that has wings and it flies away. <laughs> but a blessing that God will give you, you get it by doing what? Blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy. But if you want a blessing, you ought to read it and you ought to be obedient to what God tells you in it. And keep those things which are written therein. The time is at hand. He goes back up, up, up there again. The time is short. The time is at hand. Uh, look at Revelation 22.10. Revelation chapter 22, verse 10. Revelation 22.10. And he said unto me, Seal not. The sayings of the prophecy, Revelation 22.10. Seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book. Now watch it. For the time is at hand. When you see these things take place, you know there's not much time left. Uh, now Christian, so when you read the book of Revelation, you ought to be looking for what? You ought to be looking for the Lord's return. That's what the book of Revelation is about. Revelation chapter 1 and verse 4. John to the seven churches which are in Asia. Grace be unto you and peace from him which is, which was, and which is to come. And from the seven spirits which are before his throne. Alright. Now you have which is, right now Christ is alive, which was, he died, and which is to come, he's going to return. So all three statements refer to Jesus Christ, which is and which was and which is to come. All right, now watch it. And from the seven spirits which are before his throne. All right. Seven spirits before his throne. This occurs again. The seven spirits occur again. Look at... Uh, Revelation chapter uh, 5, Revelation chapter 5, and uh, look at verse 6, Revelation 5, 6, the seven spirits, Revelation 5, 6, and of a whole, and lo, in the midst, now I'm Revelation 5, 6, in the midst of the throne, and the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders, stood a lamb as it, as it had been slain, underline that. A lamb as it has been slain. Now why does the Lord appear as a lamb as though it had been slain? He's crucified on the cross. Having seven horns. 
and seven eyes. Underline it. The seven eyes of the Lamb are what? Which are the seven spirits of God. Underline that. Then the seven eyes represents the seven spirits of God. Now underline the next part. Sent forth into what? All the earth. So in the tribulation, the seven spirits of God are sent to the earth. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So turn to Isaiah chapter 11 now and underline and mark the seven spirits of God. Isaiah chapter 11 and pick up verse 2. Isaiah 11, 2. All right, Isaiah chapter 11, verse 1. And it came forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch, i talking about Christ, grew out of his roots, and the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. I'm talking about Christ. Now, what under it? The Spirit of the Lord, that's one. Spirit of the Lord, that's one. I'll give you a chance to mark it now, because you need to mark it. The Spirit of the Lord, that's one, shall rest upon him. The Spirit of wisdom, that's two. And understanding, that's three. And the Spirit of counsel, that's four. And, uh, and a might of, uh, and of might, that's five. And the Spirit of knowledge, that's six. And the fear of the Lord, that's seven. So, write this in the margin of your Bible. Seven manifestations of the Holy Spirit. Seven manifestations of the Holy Spirit. Christ had all of them. They were all on Jesus Christ. They are all there in the tribulation. The Holy Spirit is there. So, write this down. The Holy Spirit is in the tribulation. Now, a lot of folks will teach the Holy Spirit is taken off of the earth at the rapture. That's not true. You just read it in Revelation chapter 5. It said the uh, spirit, seven spirits are sent to the earth. And they go throughout all the earth. It says the seven spirits of God are sent into all the earth. That's during the tribulation. That's Revelation chapter 5. All right, Revelation chapter 1, in verse, uh, verse 4, from the seven spirits which are before his throne, so they're up there, and they're also down on earth, they're in both places. And when Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, that's what he is, he's a faithful witness, and the first begotten of the dead, the prince of the kings of the earth, and to him that loved us and washed us from our own sins in his own blood. Now, underline, first begotten of the what? Dead, dead. First begotten of the dead. So, write that down. What is that? That is, he's the first one to come up, never to die again. That's very important. Because he wasn't begotten in the sense that uh, he got his birth after the resurrection. No. First begotten of the death. I don't mean Jesus Christ was born again when he came up from the grave. No, not at all. But uh, some folks have read it that way. And that's not the way it's to be read. All right. First begotten from the dead. Uh, Lazarus. Lazarus, did he come back from the grave? Did he die again? So, the first begotten of the dead, you just read over here, the first begotten of the dead, and you read over here, Lazarus come back from the dead, so what does it mean? It means the first begotten from the dead is the first one to come up from the grave, write it down, never to die again. So he's the first begotten of the dead. Why, Lazarus came up, but he died again. 
And there are seven people in the New Testament that come up from the grave who died again. There's seven of them. You ought to find them. Look them up and search them. Give you a good Bible study. A little homework. <laughs> a little homework is to find out the seven people, Lazarus is one of them, that come back from the dead, they all die again. So that's why Jesus Christ is the first begotten from the dead. So now I'll say, I'll say it again. The first one to come up from the grave never to die again. All right. Now look at the rest of the verse. Unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. Now how do you, how do you get saved? By water? Is there any water? Then you're not saved by water. You're saved by blood. Now, the key verse is uh, Romans chapter 3. Take your Bible and turn to Romans chapter 3. And here's the key verse. Unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. I'm already saved. I'm not trying to be saved. I'm already saved. It's past tense, not future. Revel our Romans chapter 3 and look at verse... Uh, 25, verse 25, whom God has set forth to be a perpetuation under it, through faith in his, what? Blood. So when you put your faith in the shed blood of Jesus Christ, he saved your soul too, just like that. Born again, went to heaven, when you die, you're saved, you're forgiven, you're justified, you become a child of God, you're as good as in heaven. By putting your faith in blood. But see whose blood it was. Revelation chapter 1, whose blood was it? His own blood. So what blood did Jesus Christ have in him? Man's blood or God's blood? God's blood. So write it down. Jesus Christ had in him God's blood. Now, write down the cross reference. His own, O-W-N, own, 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 his own blood. Uh, Acts chapter 20, verse 28. He, that's why he was virgin born. Acts chapter 20. And look what it says in verse 28. His blood, Jesus Christ had in him the blood of God. That's why he can cleanse you from your sin. That's why if you put your faith in his blood, it'll cleanse you. Because it's God's blood. You say, God has blood? Yeah, God has blood. Well, what a doctrine is that? <laughs> it's a Bible doctrine, that's what it is. Acts chapter 20, verse 28. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers, to feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. There it is. Unwind it. His own blood. It's God's blood. All right. Revelation chapter 1, verse 6. Let's quit. Let's quit at verse 5. Let's finish it up at verse 5. Somebody mark it. We'll begin in verse 6. We'll begin in verse 6. Any questions? Any questions? All right, Paul request. We've had uh, we've had some visitors. Appreciate a visitor coming this evening, and we've had some visitors coming on Sunday morning. So appreciate you praying the Lord will bring them back again. All right, let's pray for Holly. What else you need to remember in prayer? All right, let's remember them in prayer too.
What else? Don't forget to pray for all of our missionaries. And uh, appreciate your praying for Sean. Get married here in a uh, month or so. A couple of months and he'll be married. So continue to pray for him. Pray for his churches. I'm going to go down and preach for him next month. So be in prayer about that. I'd ask them to be, need to remember in prayer. All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray that you bless our prayer meeting tonight. I pray that you hear our prayers, Father, and answer them according to your will. And Lord, uh, I just give us an opportunity to read your word, study it, and obey it, Father. In Jesus' precious name I pray, and for his sake, amen.